references are just that. They reference what they do, but they are not the reality of it. If we cling on to past lives and what we may have done, and yes, we have all been scallywags and vagabonds, and yes, we have all been reptilians and everything in between, <laughs> then we will restrict ourselves again if we cling to these old lifetimes. It doesn't matter what you may have done. Every moment is new now. It's always a new moment. And it's only the individual that chooses to remain fixated on part of the simulated literal timeline of lives gone by. The is looks upon all indifferently, despite what people do. Even the most evil of the controllers. For how can it be any other way? It is an isness and beyond considerations, judgments, and condemnations, just like the sun shining as a demonstration. Does the sun have resentment and disdain for people's deeds? Creation is simply a simulator for experience and comparison. To perceive what the is is, one must determine what it is not. And all the experiences are just that, necessary experiences to this end. And whatever we choose to decide to do or to be is of no concern to the is. The cause and effect nature of the dualistic psych realms that this simulated training ground is takes care of all we do. What we choose, good or bad, will we will experience the effects of it. Until such time as we cease creating and causing in the psych realms, and we connect to our real awareness and move beyond the self-perpetuated cycles of reincarnation, programming goes on too in the subconscious. We have our created consciousness based on programming and agreements throughout the ages, and still further bombardment from all the subliminal and various other means by which we can be restricted. But again, with the new you song and the real connection and the guides, a connection that supersedes creation, we are no longer subconsciously programmed through it, unless we choose to be. So the only thing we need concern ourselves with is the emotional astral body and the mental mind body. So, with thoughts and feelings, get them under control. Or, the constant activation and stimulation of them will act as filters that cloud your access to your real awareness everything in this world is designed for one purpose that is control and keeping us in creation everything we see is designed as a distraction to hijack our focus and attention and by doing so then we are consenting our agreement, and we are accordingly taplined and restricted again. And constantly our emotional vehicles are stimulated too. We have the distracting and focus-grabbing information broadcasted at us from every conceivable angle, and then we are incited to react emotionally. The atrocities and things we are shown, and the feel-good, emotionally stimulating material that a lot of the alternative researchers provide, will keep us only in a state of restriction and limit us to the physical and astral. And so, the emotional response will again can restrict us and muddy the view to our real awareness. As harsh as things are, they are all just experiences in a simulation, and so far better is it 
to adopt an indifferent perspective to everything we experience. Easier said than done. This fit the physical, emotional self will always react. But we can more so get it under control and be the disinterested view. Many times people have asked Dwayne, where is the love? But love is like any emotion. It is a restricting quality of the emotional vehicle that we choose to add to an experience. <clears throat> we see an experience, it is there. As all experiences are for us to become more aware from, as anything in creation can be used for experience purposes, then the experience then we add thoughts and ideas to the experience and considerations. We colour it in further by referencing what we know in this lifetime and relating the experience accordingly. Then we add emotion like a cherry on top. Take all of that away and indifferently view the experience with your real awareness. And this is a good practice to realistically maintain throughout the day, as life is constantly showing us what is real now, but we must see it, recognise it, and perceive what it is absent of thought, emotion, and preconceived and created agreed to ideas. So when I hear information about Trump suddenly being a good guy, that he is playing the long game, that he is secretly working against the cabal to bring down the system, we ought to consider what is going on here. In light of what I have already said, the whole of creation is about control and keeping us in it, and that this is done through distractions and focus on that which is happening in creation. The controllers have positioned all those who serve the Callum God, whether these individuals know it or not, in such a way to have maximum impact on preventing individuals from leaving creation. They have given them the platforms, the exposure, as they own everything, including all media platforms, and they've given them the incentive by giving these awareness-lacking scallywags more treats and trinkets than the slaves they control. There is little likeliness that anyone that assumes the position of the president at this time in human history, as an example, has not been bought off. Trump and all the leading political figures who are in a position to bring about the most impact on society, are reptilians, Trump certainly, and they are all compromised, even should they decide to defect against the cabal, the controllers have information and dirt on them, that would be in the very least embarrassing, at the very most shocking and outrageous. Yes, I've no doubt the guides are and do approach these individuals, for there can be no better an individual placed that can broadcast the is and what's real than those who are presidents and the like and enjoy unprecedented airtime. So if, for argument's sake, Trump is working in fact with the guides, the continued murder of millions in Yemen and the slaughter of Palestinians in the Gaza slip, uh, Strip are still occurring on his watch, and he is all in favour of 5G and has announced recently the rollout of 6G beyond even that. Does he really have our interests at heart if he is on board promoting and permitting the rollout? of this lethal technology. There are some highly placed individu individuals who are seemingly in opposition of 5G. The president of Belgium, for example, is halting the rollout of 5G, 
and he openly speaks of his concerns regarding it. And so we can surmise that, yes, the guides have approached, and successfully so, perhaps, certain key individuals, but it is always their choice to agree, and to what extent that they do. Personally, I feel Trump is still working for the controllers, but anything is possible, and people can at any time make different decisions and choices. But I wonder why all these individuals who are working with the guides, these high rank and file politicians, then make no mention of the ears. They do have the world listening after all. I wouldn't expect them to drop an information bombshell on the world regarding the real universes, but surely a few choice words here and there. We will see in time, but for now, I would suggest it's just a theatre for the masses. Keep everyone engaged and focused on creation, and keep them emotionally charged, because regardless of what is being presented by the presidents and the individuals on the big stage, be it positive or negative, if it isn't referencing the is or the real universes, then it is just ideas in creation. And the agreement to them, despite what side of the fence they fall, be they good or bad, they are still seizing our attention, our agreement, and the cause and effect consequences will be experienced. For remember, the only reason we are here is to recognise the real universes and the is and leave creation behind. Anything that happens in creation is simply experienced to that end. But everyone demonstrates themselves, so it's a case of seeing what individuals do. So, yes, we can make the world a better place, and ultimately, if the created consciousness collectively was such that it no longer was in, an, in agreement to the destruction of creation, then this would be fine. Far better to live in a clean, unpolluted world, but it is still creation, and our real intent is to leave it, and the objective of the Callum and all the forces he commands is to keep us in it. Perhaps the Callum may be recognising this, that the extent to which we are becoming aware is exacerbated by the state of the deteriorating world we find ourselves in. Maybe he is then, through his minions, creating a better world, or planning to perhaps achieve this, no longer seeking to destroy it, but make a better spot, so individuals are contented and less inclined to leave. Naturally, there would still be a measure of control, his position maintained, but the shackles would be loosened a little. That many would therefore return to their personal lives and fantasy worlds to make a life for themselves in a passable, more acceptable simulation, with less inclination now to leave it. Perhaps... The new presentation is becoming too impacting, so that to cause a mass cull might not necessarily be beneficial to the Callum after all. Up until now, without awareness, when we pass over, we are still in the designed matrix, and are regurgitated back into endless future lifetimes. So even with a mass extinction, we are still under his reptilian hand in the astral, unless we have the awareness to escape his clutches and the psych realms. Maybe then a far better scheme would be to set his minions a new directive, a new path. Maybe to play out the defeat of the controllers, the bankers and the globalists for all to see. The result possibly being then, people more likely to forsake their real awareness and settle into a dawn of a new era, free from control,
but in fact still controlled, and they are still in the matrix regardless, regardless, a cunning ploy, and possible, and it gives a whole new meaning to the phrase given as an alternative to the golden age, the golden cage. Incidentally, it's been spoken about how the awareness and the new you song is effectively creating an almost invisible pseudo dimension within this life level to the extent that when the 5G does roll out, it's likely the effects will be mitigated to a degree. So the new you is certainly a cure all and very likely the means by which, coupled with the connection to the real awareness, may have us survive the 5G apocalypse. This is in keeping with dreams I have had of this nature. I would be with various groups of survivors in a sort of post-apocalyptic zombie world, and in some cases robot worlds. That nanotechnology is prevalent in the food, the vaccinations and other delivery systems, and also in the chemtrails is well known. It seems one of the purposes of this is a potential robotization forced upon the masses. The 5G has interesting effects on nanotechnology. Labs have shown the nanotechnology to be activated when bathed in 5G, and it goes crawling all over the place, and begins assembling itself into patterns and structures. So we can see the possibility of the 5G activating a cull of a population, a cull of a proportion of the population, but then a robotization of the rest due to the activation of the nanoparticles induced by the microwaves. But then, a third group beyond that would be the new friends, with the awareness and the new you song that offsets both the lethal properties of the 5G and the, activa and the activation and robotization process. Then naturally, the cyborg survivors far more easily controlled and programmed, can effectively become metallic Manchurian candidates and hunt down the new friends. That is assuming they can do this. I saw these possibilities on the real side. I was with groups of unaffected but hunted survivors. When I say assuming they can find us, I wonder to the extent that should a kind of pocket reality be created within this existing reality for the new friends, might we not be then veiled from their sight? How many movies do we see where, for whatever reason, the monsters and robots hunting the survivors are limited in some regard? They are unable to see or hear them as an example, a little like the movie The Quiet Place. In this movie, these critters, which were reptilian, interestingly enough, had wiped out most of humanity. But the only drawback to their ability to be completely effective in their humanity wiping out activities was that they could not hear. Oh, they, they, it was that they could only hear. They could not see. So naturally, the humans cottoned onto this and spent the entirety of the film being as quiet as possible to avoid detection. Possibly then, a movie demonstration of a kind of pseudo-dimension where generally the new friends are safe from detection. Many other films have a similar theme I have found too. Also, in my real side dreams, I've had experiences where in these scenarios, the new friends acquire teleportation or po body projecting capability. So it's possible that these might be little gifts. Our real selves provide the little selves to su better survive. The real you knows what to do and how to handle anything. But you must connect with it. And that is why the scenarios described 
would not be viable for an individual unless they had connected to their real awareness and effectively passed the reins over to it. On the last episode, the last radio show I uploaded, I surmised a view, a pondering about what might happen to someone who forsakes their real awareness and the is and turns back. I suggested it was likely that an individual who had begun the process had the awareness to initially do so, agitated the controllers along the way by sharing and assisting other slaves, would certainly draw the attention of the dark forces. This is a given, for every individual who begins their journey to the ease will irritate the callum and the forces that wish to keep everyone in creation. New friends can expect interference and discouraging tactics, designed to scare and intimidate an individual into turning back. Fortunately, help is at hand with the guides and the protection the new song provides, and the controllers, who then attack new friends in particular, will receive harsh karmic cause and effect consequences that they must deal with. It is also, yes, our real awareness that is important. We can't rely on the guides alone to protect us. But from a position of real awareness, our real selves know just how to handle any situation. I've had dreams where this is so. On occasion, I can deal with monsters and dark forces if I allow my real self to take control of the situation and don't allow my personal little self to interfere with its limited ideas and perspectives and get in the way. On other occasions, when the situation was too extreme and beyond my ability to handle, due to my not being as connected to my real awareness, and so the little self interceded, and I am then at a loss with how to deal with the circumstances I was in, the guides would step in and assist me. What I pondered then was what happened if an individual turns back from the is and returns to the personal little self and life. The guides will still be there, but less likely to step in and assist an individual who's only now interested in a created personal life, and as they begin to amass more cause and effects for themselves. It was suggested it is more the awareness that is the source of our protection. Yes, the guides are there, but it's the recognition of our real awareness that allows us to deal with any situation. Agreed, as demonstrated and validated in my real side experiences. But an individual who returns to their personal little lives, forgets all about the is, will naturally sever the connection with their real awareness. So, the real awareness that would have afforded the protection more so than the guides is now disconnected, and all a person has is their personal created consciousness. And coupled with the addition of new cause and effect consequences, they are karmically setting themselves up for future problems. Now, the Callum God would be most displeased with a new student for daring to escape or attempt to do so his shackles, and also assisting others to do the same. But with the new Yu Song, the connection to real awareness, and the guides, the Callum was limited in what he could do. But now, the new student has turned away from the is, is more vulnerable, lacks awareness to handle situations, and yes, the guides are always around, and the connection can be re-established, but I can see, but I can see the Callum exacting measures of revenge. Why? Because if an individual reached a point where they had the awareness to recognise enough of the is to begin the journey to it, and in doing so they encourage others to do the same through their sharings, and even though they have turned from it, 
they are the individuals more likely to pick it up again in the future and encourage others to once again escape the matrix. The Callum would consider them to be troublemakers, or potential troublemakers. So again, I wasn't trying to cause concern or fear, it's just a view I feel is very likely. If one's protection is based mainly upon awareness that is no longer available if the connection to it is no more due to the individual's decision to return entirely to their personal life, then they are more vulnerable, I think, to the Callum God and his devices. But, of course, my own awareness or my connection to it isn't absolute. Far from it. I am going through my process too. Everyone has their views and each are equally as valid as a means to experience and compare and become more aware through them. Maybe I will try, try and see, seek some validation on the real side in regards to this. So I do find it very fascinating. I'll keep you posted if I turn up anything that pertains to this subject. Thank you.